Let's turn this into this step by step without using system threading task to reveal the magic behind async await in C Sharp. Here's the synchronous version of this little example. The program creates the calculator and calls the compute method. The calculator takes a request, performs an expensive computation and returns the result. When we run the program, we see that the calculator blocks the caller until the computation has finished. One classic and simple approach to run this computation asynchronously is to introduce a thread and to use a callback to report the result to the caller. For simplicity, we use a manual reset event to prevent the program from exiting before the result is available. When we now run the program, we can see that the calculator returns first and that the result is delivered via the callback later. Of course this code is not very elegant, so we introduce a small class to encapsulate the callback handling. We call this class promise and we add two APIs. One to provide the result of the computation and one to register a so-called continuation, which is nothing but a callback, which is called when the result is available. When we run the program again, we see that it behaves exactly as before. Before we move on to the final step and introduce async await without using system threading task, we need to change the promise class to store the result of the computation. Let's also add basic error handling to make this simple implementation of a promise a bit more realistic. Now we are ready for the magic trick. Therefore, we need to provide an awaiter, which is a class which implements iNotifyCompletion and provides a property called isCompleted and a method called getResult. The type we want to await then needs to provide a method called getAwaiter, which returns an instance of such an awaiter. The getAwaiter method not necessarily needs to be an instance method of this class. It can also be an extension method which allows you to even await types you cannot change. And with this, even though we haven't touched the calculator in this step at all, we can change the program to use async await. When we run the program one last time, we can see that it behaves exactly as expected. And that's the magic of the async await feature in C-Sharp. It is not restricted to system threading task. All you need is a result container like this promise class, an awaiter class exposing exactly the APIs required by the C-Sharp compiler, and a get awaiter method to link these two, and you can use the async await feature for your custom classes as well. If you want to learn more about concurrency and asynchronous programming, then check out this playlist.